yo, yo, it's your boy Sneaky from r r Recognition and respect. Tune in every Monday from 8 to 9 to catch up with me and my adventures and hear from my guests, ranging from artists to entrepreneurs and much, much more. Catch us every Monday of the week on the west side of the after party. See you at the party, y'all. What's up, what's up, party people? How's everybody feeling out there? You're tuning in to Recognition and Respect with your boy, Sneaky, on the west side of the after party. Uh, We have an awesome show today. It's a MLK special, so I'm not going to do my sponsors a huge service right now. I'm going to do them a disservice, but I'm going to ask all my supporters out there, followers, if you're listening right now, just grab your phone, put these marketing dollars to work. And just follow these folks. This show is brought to you by Cultivarte Studios. Number one guest, day one supporter, friend and business partner. You can follow them at Cultivarte. That's at C-U-L-T-I-V-A-R-T-E Studios. Sneaky Entertainment and Consulting. That's my company, S-H-N-E-A-K-Y-E-N-T. This show is also brought to you by Do Drop the Lights, home of the Wake and Bake Bar, a edible company run by two beautiful women of color who are trying to bring bomb ingredients, bomb extraction, you know, edibles that taste good, as well as their joy juice, dropper, micro dosing. Follow them at Do Drops Delights, D-E-W-D-R-O-P Delights. Of course, the Night Flare Company sponsors every show. That's at N I G H T. F-L-A-R-E company. And last but definitely not least, my band, my brother's band, my brothers who put Sneaky on and helped me become who I am, The Midnight Motives. Their album available right now on Spotify and iTunes. Share it, listen, support the movement. Support that shit. Super appreciate all of you. I will make sure to give you your due proper shout outs next time. But right now, we're going to get into adventure time and then I'm going to get to my guests. We have a lot to cover, we have a lot to talk about. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. It has been a cracking 2019 for me so far. Speak Easy, my monthly hip hop show, was super dope. Britney Love Rock, Chelsea and Sammy were out there supporting. Hella, hella vibes, hella packed, hella community, spoken word, poetry in the bar, super dope. Uh, started my Covina expansion at Neighborhood Watch at Katie Jake's. I'm there with the ill spot, the homie Jelani from episode 20, I think. Go back and check it out. Uh, he does the third Tuesday there. They like what I do. They're bringing me back. So if you're in Covina, West Covina, anywhere on that side of town, I'll be there on Tuesday on the 22nd of this month. So come out. Hip hop. I play top 40s, rappers, vendors, tacos, the whole deal. And then I got to DJ at my ex band, La Pobresca Show at Marty's on Newport. Super dope venue, <laughs> super, yeah, that's the old band, super dope vibes, it was dope to see my, my peeps rocking shows, having crowds, the songs that we used to play together, hearing them way better than we used to play them, <laughs> and I got to like DJ and set vibes, and you know, it was dope, you know, so I always appreciate Concrete Jungle, La Pobresca Azel for bringing me out, super dope vibes, man, thank you for all the opportunities, Marty's on Newport, definitely dope venue, I'm looking forward to working there more. And last but not least, Indy's anniversary was a huge event. Uh, their three-year anniversary, I got to book all the acts. I brought like 10 vendors. We had, I don't even know how many hundreds of people come through throughout the whole day. It, it just feels good to have this momentum going, going, going. And then today, a little late, a little tired, a little flustered. So if my interviewing game is not super on point, it's because... I just came pretty much almost direct from the California African American Museum uh, for MLK Day. We did a screen printing workshop with Cultivarte. We served served over 400 people, made over 1,000 posters. And uh, it was, honestly, it was dope to be able to do something for the community because, like, we were cracking jokes all day with the folks. It's like, it's hard to be a community-based company if you're not based in the community. So, like, we're trying to, like, you know, practice what we preach, really, you know, put our money where our mouth is, back our, our, our voices with action. And um, perfect segue. 
So Martin Luther King Day, great demonstrations across the country. Some people had the day off, some people don't. And, you know, just for sake of transparency and hope that I don't tokenize that this isn't a, like any kind of, you know, not to be misseen, I just felt if I have a platform and it's Martin Luther King Day, then I should have someone black on, you know? And that's just the Chelsea say what's up to the people. What's up? Chelsea Monet in the house. What's up? I'm black for sure. Yeah, you're definitely black. And uh, <laughs> and again, I'm not I'm not trying to be racist. I'm not trying to be tokenizing. Uh, this isn't a political show. This is a business, entrepreneur, music, hustle, inspirational kind of show. But it definitely is infected by my politics, the people who I decide to bring. That's why I try to like have women as well as men. I try to have people of color, white people. You know, I really try to give a diverse image, you know, and the whole reason why we do this is because, you know, for my folks that are following me on the podcast and on social media and for the peeps in Dallas who don't even know me and for whoever's tuning in all around the world, they just kind of want to offer y'all a vision of what's going on in LA. Everyday people, you know, from many different circumstances, risking it all to get their passion, follow their dreams. And if anybody embodies that, that I, when I think of you, Chelsea, and I think of everything, how we met, mm. everything that you do, like you're really like risking it all. Thank so um, yeah, let's just start how we start every freaking podcast. And if Thanks, a person God. came up to you and asked, what do you do? How would you answer? Feel free to be as literal or metaphorical as you wish. Uh, when people ask me what do I do, I tell them that I'm a performance artist and I'm a social justice advocate. Honestly, that's what I tell them because, uh, you know, people are artists, but if you don't actually perform and you're not actually like, I say performing and recording artists because, you know, we record music, we perform as well. But all of that, like you're saying, is influenced by my uh my like hatred of the the state of social justice all over the world since I was in college like sociology was my major so you know I've been just committed to this shit and then I just wanted to bring my poetry into that side of things so yeah that's what I do I'm a social justice advocate performing artist uh you want to perform something for us right now I'm down yeah let's do it hey we got that instrumental on lock hey y'all this is a this is a new song actually I recorded it on New Year's Eve because I was like what am I gonna do I gotta go to work in the Fuck, fuck it, let's do it. Uh, can you hear me out there? Uh, yo, yo. Every day I hustle cause I know it's gonna work. Work, work. They ask me where I'm going, I probably say I'm going to work. Yeah, yeah. They ask me what I'm doing, New Year's Eve. I'm chilling, got an ounce from that love box in the building. Got a pot of lentils and we jumping through the ceiling. What I'm doing 2019, building, making beats, buying property, doing me, I got receipts, keep your drama, stop including me, in your beef, in your tweets, meeting Simma giggling, kissing under the sheets, crank the heat, I'm from the tropic of cancer, these streets ain't romantic, get you stuck in the slammer, I was drinking Fago, you was drinking Fanta, you still lying to your kids, let them believe in Santa, I'm nice with it, like your daddy after mama catch him cheating. I feel like Kodak, see a cracker, hit a lick, I'm scheming. Went to night nice school, played ball in college. Corporate America, they see I got knowledge. This is show me roots since then, I can't call it. Grandpa, mama, daddy, all oh, alcoholics. This is show me roots since then, I can't call it. Uh, uh. Every day I hustle, cause I know it's gonna work. They ask me where I'm going, I probably say I'm going to work. Every day I hustle. Cause I know it's gonna work They ask me where I'm gonna Probably say I'm gonna Five bucks in my account But that rent pay No food in the fridge But my tummy ain't empty Ay, 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 ay Come on Five bucks in my account But that rent pay No food in the fridge But my tummy ain't empty Just made juice for the whole squad My homie said she feelin' like a whole god Uh Skin shining, eating good, I know your peep made. I got the studio on lock, shout out to Sneak hey. Can't run away from the pressure, partners need me. My mama gave me everything, she said, life ain't easy. Hey. <laughs> this is the bell. I love that song. Shout out to Arza on the beat out of Arizona. What up, dog? 
So going to work. A lot, a lot going on right there in that song. Let's break it down. 2019, New Year's Eve. Yeah. You're not thinking about partying or getting turned up. I was it's, getting turned up. Ah! <laughs> Inside of the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean that song, like, there's so much journey and growth that you're talking about right there, you mm-hmm. know, and just I mean, if that's one thing that I know about you is you hustle. So let's let's talk about that. Like, a lot of people that come in here, they're doing their hustle full time. Mm -hmm. Most of the people that come in here work in the nine to five, Mm -hmm. doing the dreams on the side. Yeah. So what's that like? I feel like I'm kind of in the middle of both those things because I do have this job. But uh, like two years ago, me and Semi, we were both not working. We were only doing freelance stuff and just getting it in, being broke. But uh, then our house got sold gentrification so then I had to go back to you know like working for other people and stuff but to me every time when I'm like out there working honestly I'm just promoting still I'm telling everybody about my band they're like how you doing today I'm like oh well, I got a show tonight blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah, I wear yeah. my band t-shirt to work all the time I, I made that song and I, I decided not to go out on New Year's Eve because I did have a fucking work in the morning on New Year's Day I gotta be there at 7 45 a.m. so I was like man I'm not even gonna do all that but I ended up not going to sleep at all and just going to work being all delirious and stuff but it was for the best because I put the song out it's going good but uh I, I like it and I, it's just teaching me to be just resilient and not and not give up because I'm not rich I can't just fucking throw money on my problems I have to fucking fix them you know and that's what I think is the difference in me and a lot of people especially like being a woman too you know you gotta like make people respect you for that thing and, and that's how that you're queer right yeah. so you got all this intersectional freaking yeah and I i'm think... intersected dog <laughs> <laughs> well you mentioned the okay it's mlk show mm-hmm. i brought you on Let, let's talk about the black experience in america right like mm-hmm. do you in your personal opinion uh in 2019 mm-hmm. have we like slid back a little bit in america as far or you think this is the same shit that's been going on people just starting to see it now uh yeah i think it's a little bit of both it's a it's a people are feeling in I think it's the words like emboldened or whatever right. by by this fucking full 45, you know? So they're like, yeah, I can be a little more racist out. But um, we're, we live in California, so, you know, we're not getting the worst of it. But in the right. middle, it's been like that the whole time, you know? Like in Mike Brown, like all that stuff. It's like those are racist-ass towns with racist police. All their police are KKK, KKK. So I feel like, yeah, we're just kind of... The internet is really just b- allowing it to be seen more. Like not even just America, like all over the world. Palestine, like Sudan, like all these places. Places are having civil unrest and stuff, and like they're trying to, you know, like, d- like press it down with the, with the, like China with their fucking, uh, what's it called, like censorship and yeah, shit. Yeah, but yeah. I think yeah, there's so many people are just getting awakened just from the internet. You know, you just share one little thing, and you're like, damn, I never even seen that. I never even knew. It's just like the the civil rights. You know, when the civil rights popped, it's just because that shit was happening the whole time. But people have seen it on TV now. Right. The news are there. They're seeing right. people getting bit by dogs, getting sprayed by the shit. So right, right, I feel like that's King, the same thing. Like, Exactly. Stuff, right. Like that dude, you know, he just got free, like last year he got killed by the police on camera. Like he's right there on camera getting killed, so nothing even happens, you know. So I think we're on the same shit, but it's getting better because young kids are like stepping up and together. Yeah, like, they're those like what's it called, make America great, young ass fools. But yeah, they're like they don't they they don't have no spirit. They don't have no soul. You know, the people yeah, with they're the not, real they're stuff not are becoming organizing. Awake. They don't have some kind of like rally. Exactly. Goal. Oh, they're organizing, all right. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> You know what? That's always that's kind of the biggest thing between the right and the left that mm-hmm. I've heard. Like, uh, listen, a lot of podcasts mm-hmm. suck in a lot of media. You mm-hmm. know, both sides like try to be well versed in mm-hmm. what everybody's talking about. And you know, it's one thing that I heard that I actually feel like uh, I can agree on. You know, the right's really good at organizing, like on these long term get fools elected, and the left's really good at like let's make a lot of noise and fucking have like big rallies, but like yep. not a lot of end process. Mm-hmm. So we talked. You talked about that song that you went to college and you ball and all yeah, that. Yeah, like what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, do you feel like, like, because the college that I went to, uh, pretty white supremacist, pretty rate like a lot of like mm-hmm. you know like, not that many black people first of all, and then you know wasn't really like a good environment for black people. Did you have that experience in, um, in college? Luckily, in college, luckily I didn't as much because I was like I was an athlete, so you know they're like being all fucking nice to me and right. shit. And we're just like on the athlete athlete side of everything. Like this is the athlete place. Like this so is like, the Ooh, yeah, you guys so great. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it up, get us that money. Yeah, you don't get yeah. paid, but you know right, right, the right. games are getting us money. So and and I'm in the Bay Area, and our school is like. 
like uh, I went to Foothill College and that was like a big school for physical therapy and shit. So we had like an international like school and like it's cheaper to go there than to go over there. So we had hella Japanese students, hella Indian students, hella like African students and shit like that. So luckily in college, no. But like when I was young, I, I was usually like one of the only two black people in, in my class or my school and shit. And that definitely like sometimes I feel like I don't even know who I am because I'm always just like like being like fitting in but not like you know what I'm saying? but not really like but not really fitting in and I'm right. gay and so now I'm just like oh fuck like, are these people against gay people or gay, against right? black people more which one should yeah. I be less of and you're like visibly gay right <laughs> visibly it's gay, not like, yeah. you're like oh I, I'm a lesbian yeah like, but me and my partner good. yeah Semi she's she's like kind of like new to like out being gay and she's like I don't feel that I'm like that's cause you're fucking cute ass little girl. You, you, you look what <laughs> you know? people think straight women look like yeah like, so exactly they, you know you're, you're not getting that but I think it also, like, being, like, when I started dealing with gay shit, literally, like, my girlfriend in high school, her mom was hella racist, homophobic, and just, like, crazy. And she, um, she, like, took her out of school, so she, like, couldn't see me and shit like that, and took her off the basketball team. Wow. Yeah, dude. And she had, like, run away all the time, and, like, my parents would, like, go pick her up and shit like that, you know? It was, like, hella crazy. But that lady and, like, all the parents, they'd be like, Chelsea's turning everybody gay on the team. <laughs> Turning like, is gay. I wish. Powerful ass. So I'm like, they were already gay, uh, first, first of, of all. all. They're gay as fuck. They're gay as fuck. Second of all, y'all um, blind. And yeah, and they over. will be trying to tell my parents, you know, like, hey, just so you know, your daughter's gay. My dad's like, I totally know that because yeah. I know what my daughter's doing. Your daughter sucks dick. I know that as well. <laughs> Can you say that on here? I just did. You can, but I'm like, no comment. No comment. You know what I'm saying? So they're you be trying to. bring that hella masculine energy, and I almost forget you're a female. So I'm like, that's some shit my homie would say. Nah, I'm just saying. That's the truth, because they were trying to slander me and like yeah, yeah, shit yeah. like that. And my dad's a basketball coach, so they're giving him shit, and he was like having to defend me and shit like that. So it's crazy. But it, that, oh, I say all that to say, you know, that made me resilient and see that people are full of hate and shit, but you can't get like overwhelmed and just become super like, even though. LA sometimes make a nigga cynical, but you know you gotta yeah, yeah, you gotta yeah. believe in yourself and not be like not be. Not be I think it's that. also cool that your pops is like I know support that love her regardless mm -hmm. not yeah. a big deal y'all need to fix your you know like because mm -hmm. there's sometimes you know like a lot of the tragedy that we hear that happens to LGBTQIA folks is because mm -hmm. their parents don't accept them they yep. they get kicked out of their house yep. they. I was yeah. in Brazil, like, they, they kill their kids over there, like, you know, people die from homophobia and transphobia, yeah, like. This one girl on my, on my basketball team, I won't say her name, but I remember her, she was, like, experimenting being gay, I guess, but uh, her parents, like, took her out of our school. Like, I'm telling you, not my girlfriend, a different girl, took her out of school, put her back in Christian school, like, cut, like, cut all her, like, braids out, gave, took all her clothes, all her tight jeans, and just, like, you know, like, damn, you guys are crazy. <laughs> and, like, man, Let's if talk I... Talk about suppression. Yeah, gosh. if I could tell you who it was, you'd be like, damn. Like, you don't even know them, but they're, like, you know, like, a famous person, like, their parents are famous, you know, so it's just so crazy to think, like, even though... You know, like you got that especially, dirty little secret yeah up. and like in the black community it's so sad that people are still like so on Christianity that they'll like do shit like that you know yeah. that shit is like damn that was that was Jesus was talking about judging and hating I'm pretty sure that's literally opposite opposite like if you well, read the a different book show. if you read the book you know <laughs> yeah. so uh, basketball were you basketball, already yeah. writing poetry and doing music when the in the basketball days yeah um uh, I definitely I've been playing basketball since I was like six years old, so you know I started playing basketball like 1995 or something like that, and then I was getting into hip hop. I'm from Detroit, you know, hip hop's fucking alive and well right there. Um, <laughs> so I definitely was always into like poetry, and I, I definitely started. I started writing poetry. I honestly is like love letters on some love letter type of shit, you know, but like, like love letters that rhymed. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like you're Damn, so girl, you're beautiful, so fine. you're yeah. so fine. I want to be with you, think about you all the time, status like that. But then I would say I really started taking this seriously in college, which is when I was probably like 19, because I took this class called Black English, and I had this teacher, and her name was Miss um, Huerta, and uh, and she was so fine, and she was like an Afro, like <laughs> Afro-Latin, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And she was like, I think she was like Puerto Rican, I think, or something like that, and she was just, all types of illustrious, just all type, sure, yeah. yeah, and she always wore bright clothes and everything, she would just be talking, like, the first book we read was Autobiography of Frederick Douglass, you know, and then we started talking about Ebonics and poetry and shit like that, and then I had, we had like an assignment, I don't even know if we had to write it in prose, like poetic, 
or whatever, but I think I just did. Right. And it was about Ebonics and how, like, you know, this is our native tongue. This is, like, similar to the dialects of West Africa, blah, right, blah, right, the correlation, right. the poem. And then she ended up putting the poem in, like, her syllabus for, like, her lesson and oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, so that just, like, pumped me up. So and she, like, talked to me after. Yeah. Teaching that self help rap, so. <laughs> so she was like, you know, you're really good. You should get, pursue it and shit. So then. Uh, then I think at that same year I took like theater in, in college, you know, just some easy ass elective classes. But like, like some performance, <laughs> yeah, but like. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. And my teacher tried to send me out on audition, but I was like, oh, I can't, I'm scared. She's a super nice Indian lady. She was like, come on, you can do it. I was like, no, I can't. So I never yeah, like yeah, really you're over did there it. Playing ball in exactly. front of all kinds of people, killing the game in the yeah, spotlight. Yeah, exactly. So then I quit. Books. I quit school after my sophomore year because we, like, lost the state championship. And I was all, like, sad. Like, oh, if only we had won, my life would be different. <laughs> you know? So did you drop out? You lost your I dropped out. Yeah, I dropped you, out. You were just like, fuck this. I just stopped like, going. I went to, to Atlanta. Do. I didn't have other shit to do. I was just being dumb. I went to Atlanta to date this girl. I don't know. What, but was, but I will say when I was in Atlanta, that was the first time when I was, like, really around all black people. And I was like, oh, shit all black people and now nobody's looking at me in particular because I'm gay because Atlanta hella gay. <laughs> <laughs> Casey didn't know. Casey didn't know. <laughs> so and, yeah. And a lot of good music in Atlanta, right? Yeah. Trap hell culture, yeah. trap music, yeah, basically. Yeah, freaking. That's when I started of, listening to Gucci Man when I was like 20 and stuff. Yeah, yeah, Shout yeah. out to Gucci. Go out. Gucci! Man, wait. I'm going to do a song with Gucci Man. Y'all going to be like, damn, this is crazy. She said she was going to do that. Manifest this yeah. shit. All right. So damn. 19 years old. How old are you now, if you don't mind me I'm asking? I'm 30. All right. 88. 30. So I don't even know. I'm bad at math. How many years is that? Doing what? Uh, one, a like 11 years? Mm-hmm. Of like, like being into hip-hop. Yeah. And like trying to rap, taking rap serious. When I started going to this open mic called uh, Cafecito, which is in this place called Iguanas. Shout out to Iguanas. In Alhambra? No, 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 it's in San Jose. Oh. And, like, they used to be just one place. Now they have, like, three, four restaurants. And they're, like, they be doing shit with the San Jose Sharks and shit now. They're fucking hella blown up. Hit yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> know. Oh, they're, they're my homies. They're cool. And the, the the cool thing about it is the the guys who owned it, um, the, their dad, like, owned it. And they, like, worked there, too. But they were in a house band. Every Thursday, it would be the house band there. And they're, like, they'll back us up. Like, good ass fools. Like, good as fuck. Like, shredding. Like, almost, like as good as, not even almost, as good as Edgar type of guitar piece. And, was and then his like... brother's the drummer. And then my other homie, who was like my mentor, he was the, the, the MC, he was the host of the show. And then that fool used to go out of town to Italy. And then he started asking me to co host the show when he was out of town. Mm. So that's how I started hosting and shit. Yeah. So basically, and how long after was this still in college? Or yeah, it was you... during. It was during college. Yeah. So like from the like jump, you years. were like hosting, rocking with a band, mm -hmm. like kind of like the proto typical yeah. of what your life is yeah, right, right now. now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey. Shout out to Bananas. Gonna yeah. Bananas tomorrow. Bananas. Is it tomorrow? Uh huh. Already? Because it got rained out um, oh. last week, so we had to reschedule it. But yeah, sure. man, Mid One, that's the guy's name. Like, I don't know where that fool went. He, like, ghosted off the face of the earth, but shout out to him. He produced my first tracks I ever recorded and shit. Yeah, man. And Sweet. so you've been in L.A. now doing music, hustling, like, mm -hmm. with this lifestyle, Earth Arrow. Mm -hmm. and we'll get into Earth Arrow right now and all that for how long now? Um, like, like, six and a half years. So for the past six and a half years yeah. you've been going hard yeah. like hard yep you yep. know i done probably in the past six years i feel like i've probably done like 300 something shows for show definitely and not just like band but also solo yeah show. i'm talking about also solo yeah 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 because yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. with the band in only two years we did like 170 shows Fuck. For real, I have it on um, Facebook. You just go down to the events. I fucking look through that shit. Yep. Oh, and I mean I, that, and that's kind of the shit that like, that's the kind of stuff that I like talk about on this show, right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people will see y'all play, or come to a backyard and try to invade your space and be like, <laughs> "What? These fools are not that special." <laughs> and it's like, nah, we work hard for this shit. We fucking rehearse. What do you mean by that? Like that not that special? Like they think that people are giving us shit or something? Nah, I just feel like people will see a band rock mm -hmm. and not think about the fucking hundreds of thousands of hours that mm. each person individually and then collectively <clears throat> right? has put exactly, together. Exactly. Exactly. We're like, like this moment a in in a backyard that's super casual and like no big deal for them yep. is something that you work very My hard life. to fine tune, you know? And I feel like yeah. it's, it's, it's nice 
for people to hear that so mm-hmm. that next time they hear an artist or they wonder why you know someone's like going so hard or being so passionate mm-hmm. it's like oh shit there's like many behind the scenes Hell hours yeah. so hours talk about hours, earth arrow do the spiel for the folks who have maybe never heard about yeah, y'all. Hell yeah. like, so earth arrow is a band that i'm a part of with all my best friends there's nine of us and we've been together for two years and the way we got together is my homie edgar me and him are in a band called ghetto heat it's a duo it's like melodic hip-hop duo and uh he his friend was like, "Hey man, you gotta like start playing more big shows." So he started doing this acoustic thing under the name Earth Arrow, like in, he, he was calling it Indigenous Blues, and a lot of it would be instrumentals, but like some crazy acoustic shit, you know. But then he got booked at the Viper Room. He's like, "Hey, you wanna play this show with me?" I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "I think I'm gonna get this homie to drum with us." Hey, would you ask Sammy? And would you ask your home? I was like, "Yeah, I'm fucking." So he put together the band. He put together the band like that, yeah. And then we did that first show. We got such a good like like a uh, good response we're like hey y'all let's do it literally two months later we recorded our ep and yeah. then you just been and yeah we've just been doing heck of shows i would say most of our shows are community community shows like some social justice anti-gentrification shit but um i didn't say this but our band is like afro indigenous hip-hop funk soul psychedelic cumbia rock and espanol reggaeton reggae and right? it's even like <laughs> I feel like it's even expressed like you you do the you do the full like ten <clears throat> yards right like mm-hmm. the all the all the band members are like the representation of those cultures oh, y'all yeah. y'all rock indigenous garb mm-hmm. you know like mm-hmm. the the makeup like yeah. it's very An stylized it's supposed theatrical to, it's supposed to like. Yeah, ignite invoke, that invoke. yeah evoke that spirit people, people always say that they say you know it's like going to church you know going to our show and shit and i feel like without it we get all like if we don't perform for a long time we start fucking arguing with each other we're just like fucking like some fucking, energy right yeah you need that, you need your <laughs> get that out <laughs> i need it give me the show straight give me up love. straight up yeah but i love them and yeah we've been just cha- we just i don't know man we've been getting so blessed and doing so many crazy shows just off passion like all the all the biggest hookups we have are just from like like a show like at the offbeat bar i'm pretty sure the offbeat bar is where we went met this guy his name is matt himes shout out to you matt and he booked us for the eagle rock music festival and then the eagle rock music festival that's when we met the guys from roland the music company and then from there they recommended us to the guys at red bull who are recording our our album yes that's a lot to unpack <laughs> give me a second yeah you hear that so what you're saying is hella hustle Hello, hustle. Put yourself in a position to re- meet meet the right people uh-huh. and be ready to seize Perform, that opportunity. Did it. Yep. Perform hella shows, shook hands with all, like, you know, yep. introduce. You're always, like, meet mm-hmm. and greet, fucking networking. Yep. And uh, you've been playing these huge festivals and, like, have produced some pretty legit video content. Yep. And starting to get some shine. Starting yep. to get some shine. Straight up. Um, do you feel like y'all operate in a safe space where like you don't you don't get you don't get as much as like of the racism and the because of the events you do uh-huh. and the crowd you you feel like you, you don't you don't experience that stuff uh-huh. as much as an artist as a band as far as like getting booked or mm-hmm. kind of your relationship with other people i feel our band is basically like half and half like half black half brown and so that's to our advantage and also it's just like it just is busting in people's face like hey if you're anti-black or if you're anti like like indigenous, we like Latin. Like oh, this isn't Lat- Latin. I don't speak Latin. Do you speak Latin? I, do not speak Latin. I don't know nobody that speaks Latin. But you know. But anyways, but if you're like, <laughs> that was a Latino joke. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like so we're like busting down the doors of all different types of things, you know. And then me and my partner are in the band, so then it's giving that LGBTQ like element some people are homophobic and we're right there fucking kissing in the middle of the set oh, and shit yeah, you yeah, know yeah, yeah. or we're just like being hella black or being hell singing our songs in spanish so i think it's to our advantage people think being political is like not like people won't book you or some shit like people are waking up that's what the yeah. current situation yeah, is yeah, people yeah. want to hear real shit people are sick of hearing about all this money that we don't have like we don't got no money you know it's like all nine of us and we fucking got one car you know what i'm saying so i think it's i think it's working out well for us and just challenging everybody everywhere we go that's dope yeah. so um, i feel like i got i want to bring it back to mlk yeah, yeah like um a lot of there's a lot of like 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 critical critiques of the man right Mm because you know we're all not perfect he upheld you know uh stereotypical gender roles this this and that uh how do you 
how do you think or how, you know how do you feel like about like how do we reconcile those things like for like do you does anybody ever try to throw because they've thrown it in my face yeah. oh he was an alcoholic who beat his wife and womanizer mm, yeah. like so like 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 where's the how where how do we how do we bridge mm. that gap how do we like you know yeah how do we kind I, of I think learn that, from that heal from that like counter I, that yeah, every time when people talk about all these, like, hero people and talk about, oh, they did this and did that. You know, first of all, anybody who's, like, a pedophile or, like, a rapist or, like, a killer, I'm not condoning that type of shit, you know? He was an alcoholic. He cheated on his wife. I mean, like, I don't give a fuck. Like, that fool was growing up and being during the most racist, like, one of the most racist periods of ever in the South, the most racist place on the fucking planet. So, you know what I'm saying? It's like, if you can't see past that and the good that he did in the world, then you just don't give a fuck. And what is your personal politics anyways? Like, what do you actually stand for? What's your, like, bottom line of life? That's how I always want to tell people. I'm like, so are we not acknowledging that we were stolen from Africa? You really give a fuck about this fool cheating on his wife? Is that, is that what we're talking about? We're talking about cheating on? I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I mean, when you put it in that perspective, <laughs> it's like... You know, it's like, what's the bottom line? And, um, yeah, I just really try not to idolize people, and I just try to read their whole story and shit like that and just think about, you know, like, what did that do to the... Like, what did... Like, his wife was right there with him. And like, she's still fucking, like, her own person, you know? She did just as much stuff as he did, you know? So, I don't know. I try to get in people's personal business as far as, like, that kind of shit. And alcoholism, it's like, how do you, what the fuck? Like, that fool's getting death threats every day. Right. You know, on and his they, they kids. Kill and they, they yeah, kill they kill them. <laughs> yeah, they kill them. <laughs> <laughs> if people wanting to kill you doesn't make you want to have a drink. I don't know. I don't know what it, it does. Yeah. Yeah, and that's how I feel a lot of times. Sometimes our family and like our bandmates, like all of our families, they don't understand that we do. You know, we do party. We do like definitely self medicate with different types of drugs and alcohol and shit like that. But it's just like, hey man, like I don't got that peace of mind to just be like so. Oh, I'm just oh, so. I have no worries. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? If I was rich, maybe so. But it's like fools in the hood. You know, we didn't build those liquor stores and they built them there for us. You know, it's all a trap, but. You know, we're just dealing with it as we can as we can deal with it day by day. So I'm not judging nobody struggling with alcohol addiction, any of that kind of stuff because hey. That's just real. Yeah. I mean it's like everyday people, right? I mean for me it's just like at what point does someone's um character flaws like at what point is that them? You know, mm -hmm. at what point does that take away you know, like does that negate everything yeah. else that someone does in their life because they have certain flaws? Mm -hmm. And honestly, at some point, it's all about balance. And like you said, most people are calling that out. They're, they got ulterior motives. They're trying to prove a point, trying to push you off your game. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, homie got killed. They proved it in the court of law. Homie so. got killed. <laughs> yeah, man, shout out so, to that. Shout out to uh, MLK. I mean, so, like, today we have a very interesting situation going on, right? Like, like Me Too, Black Lives Matter. Uh, freaking this blue wave of women, people of color, indigenous folks in the government. Like, you're banned, or you as a person, or like, you're, you know, what do you, if you had like one message that you mm -hmm. try to advance, like one agenda, like one, if you were like a single issue, type, mm -hmm. which you're not. Yeah, yeah. But if you were, like, what do you think you would put all your energy into, like, trying to fix right now, like, in this moment, in this day? Like, where do you think? Like, society needs the most help. Like, um, what do you think would help? Like I think the, most? the thing that would help the most society is just women getting justice and being heard and having our stories told and just going back through history and just, like, revealing how women were, like, as equal of part as men. You know, it's equal. It's not more or less. It's just equal. So I feel like women's rights are honestly the most important thing out right now because they're the people who raise society. So if they're not being, um, if they're not being you know, treated well and having their rights, then, you know, everybody, everybody at some point is getting affected by that, whether they know it or not. So... I say, yeah, women's rights. Like, people come up to us in the band all the time. Like, we do love your band. They're so dope. But we fucking love you ladies, you know? We're so glad to see three fucking ladies, women of color, like, dark-skinned people, like, you know, doing, saying our truth. So I would say, yeah, women of color getting justice and, you know, respect and, like, like um, just more Native women in, uh, in government, honestly.
because they're not perfect either. You know, people are trying to say stuff about, oh, I shouldn't do this. But it's like, you don't know how hard she had to work to get there. And, like, these fools are going to make you do some fucked up shit regardless. So, <laughs> and at some point, like, the... you know, like, do I want to fucking drink all these soda pops and all these different people and all these things that are going to try to sponsor our band? No, not really. But do I want to get on those platforms and say some real ass shit? I think, yeah, I think I do. Right. Yeah, like, sue me. I don't know. You put me on some shit. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you folks out there listening. Yeah, if book you, Earth yeah, book us. If you don't want to see us on there, you don't want to see us fucking working with all these people. You work, you book us, give us money, pay us, get our bills paid. Cause exposure don't pay them bills. <laughs> yeah, nah. I'm I, I I love the meme that's like the yeah, organ trail that's, where they're that's, like, that's, you know, you die from exposure. <laughs> I didn't see that. I thought you were going to say, oh, thank you. My rent is 800 exposures. No. <laughs> that was good too. That I just saw memes it. are changing the world, y'all. Shout out to memes. <laughs> All right, we got. We I never got, knew how to say meme. I was like, meme? Meme? <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, meme? Like, it's like my, my Latino people who are like, Zell? <laughs> I think it's Zell, but whatever. Uh, so we, we got a couple minutes left. Um, Awesome conversation. Yeah, man. I fucking I love chilling yeah, with yeah. you. Um, I I I admire your hustle. Uh, I don't even know your full story, and yeah. we we don't really have an hour is not really enough yeah. time <laughs> to get the whole. Story. Yeah, it's a bunch. But um, it's pretty good though. If you could uh, if you could get some advice, right? You said ladies, the 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 women need to mm -hmm. tell their stories and be empowered mm -hmm. and be emboldened, like. Do you have some tips for female artists or if you can go back and talk to yourself when you first started? Yeah. Do you have anything that, you know, you would have like been like, yo, 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 don't, uh -huh. don't do that. Do this. Like, I would say this is to female artists, but just MCs in general. I would say my biggest advice is like we're living in this age where technology is just abundant. So I would say get some simple, affordable technology you can afford and record yourself as much as possible. And don't listen to nobody tell you that it's like not good. Just keep on practicing. Keep, I'm not saying don't listen to nobody tell you it's not good. Yeah, you know, yeah, listen yeah. to your, your very close homies. People but you, you trust. People You're, you trust. But trust. Not, people you trust not to be yes people. Yeah, exactly. You know, but you got to put out more stuff. Like book yourself, promote yourself. You know, make a business card, make your make a website, you know, make a SoundCloud, make everything that you think you could do and always have something on you to give to people to sh to tell them about yourself. Like, hey, this check this out, it's a sticker, hey, it's like a flyer, hey, it's like some juice or some shit. You know, you got to definitely promote yourself more and believe in yourself and don't expect anybody to believe in you as much as you do. That's like a cliche kind of saying, but it's so true. It's like people don't know and they're not inspired by what you're inspired to. So you got to you got to you got to you got to show them. You gotta show them. You gotta show them. <laughs> All right, Help one yourself. more. This one might be a little bit more difficult, okay. but it is MLK Day. Yeah, yeah. It's about you know, uh, black rights, advancing black. This whole thing is about trying to put the black narrative it up. So, narr narrative mm -hmm. up. So, what are a few tips that you could give to allies, either non-black POC, mm -hmm. uh, white people, mm -hmm. you know, trans, anybody that you think that yeah. you would consider an ally? Because I know yeah. we have these conversations a lot. We're like. People in our circle drop the M bomb. That was like, gonna be my first one. <laughs> <laughs> or like, you know, like not, you know, not yeah. not standing up for racist shit. Like yeah. when you see it. So like yeah. I would say a couple tips I have is just yeah, first off, just never say the N word. Like last night uh, I performed and I wrote this song and in my own song, you know, I said I said nigga and then like I was performing and I like in mid performance I was like, I'm not gonna say nigga today and I just like didn't say it, but then I didn't tell my my uh, I didn't tell Semi or them, so they're doing my ad libs. They're like, like nigga! <laughs> <"Nigga!" laughs> I was like, I either, like, nigga! <laughs> So, you know, it's hard. It's like, it's so true. My Angelou said it, you know, it's like, it's a very oppressive word. And we, we did our best to reclaim that shit, but that shit's not happening. So black people, all people, we just got to stop saying that shit. And uh, the second thing is just like, when, if you have black friends or you claim to have black friends, like just don't fetishize them and just listen to them and just ask them about their experience sometimes because otherwise you're just really not going to know. And man, like read a book. This is what I would say. Read a book by a female black author, and I'm gonna give you two right now. Write them down. First one, Bell Hooks. Oh, I got a couple, I got a book first. Second is gonna be Toni Morrison. I'm gonna hit you with a third. Wait, is that T-O-N-I? T-O-N-I, yeah, T-O-N-I. Super, like, Toni Morrison, super dope, Afro, like, 
science fiction type of cool stuff. But then also Octavia Butler, born and bred L.A. Pasadena freaking uh, black author. So read some books by them and you'll just start seeing like like how the experience is just like different. And, you know, it's like a u- unique experience to the history of the world. We were taken from this place. Now we live here. Now we're supposed to like be part of society, but everybody like doesn't fuck with us. So think about how that could be, you know, and then let's figure out how we can just... Stop saying the N word. <laughs> Stop dropping the N bomb. Yeah. Please. That's it. it. That's yeah. like public service announcement. It's 2019. Let's leave that we're word good, in the past. That we we've, we've we've already used the amount that we're way over our quota. <laughs> <laughs> we're way over the N bomb yeah. quota. You know, every time yeah. someone else uses it, we're just like we're all humans and everything. But this, you know. This, we gotta stop this, y'all. All right, uh, last five minutes. Yeah. Tell the folks where they could find you. Social media, you anything you want to follow, any me. shout out to them. You want to shout out to Ben? Yeah, shout, shout out, out to whatever. the whole band. Shout out to Sema, Shia, Takun, Edgar, Takun. Uh, I already said Takun, Dimitri, <laughs> Marky, Fred, uh, Marlon. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to everybody behind the scenes that helps make my life easy. Uh, Nancy, freaking Gloria. Shout out to my mom. Lisa, shout out. And uh, you can find me online at Miss Chelsea Monet. That's my name. My mom named me that, Chelsea Monet. Super white, but I get a bunch of jobs all the time, so it's working out. Um, that's all I got, man. I, I got one more. I got that song. Oh, we're going to play it on the, we're gonna play on the, at the outro. End? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. This that's, song, they're, they're gonna go just out. shout out to Andre Hondo, actually. He, uh, two years ago, we were kicking it on MLK Day. And we're like, yeah, we need to make a song. So we decided to call that song Who Shot the King because... You know, they never said who it was, but, you know, we just want to draw attention to the fact, like, yeah, that in court, they proved that the U.S. government killed him. <laughs> Straight FBI. Straight so, yeah, that's FBI. it, man. The this Saturday, we're performing in uh, in Highland Park at the Offbeat Bar. It's a free show if you guys want to come check out our band. It gets sweaty. It's hot as fuck up in there, but, yeah. Uh, Earth Arrows. Earth Arrow. Earth Arrow uh, Music. Media, yeah. At uh, Earth Arrow Music everywhere, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere, EarthArrowMusic.com, log in. We do all that stuff ourselves, so, yeah. All right, y'all. You have been rocking out with Sneaky on recognition of, and respect on the west side of the after party. Thank you, Chelsea, for Damn, this awesome conversation. So great. I, I hope I, I hope I did this conversation justice. It was beautiful, There's man. people out there who are mad at me about something. Reach out. I love hearing all the feedback. I'm always trying to get better. I'm always down to learn something new or, you know, take another look at a perspective, change an idea, very open-minded. So, you know, if this triggered you in some way or if you think, you know, could have done a better job of it, I'll probably be here next year. And, you know, next month is Black History Month, and I'm going to try to bring, like, a majority black artist. Like, so I'm going to have Dwayne back. Um... Uh, next week, I'm going to be talking to my boy Darkside, teacher on strike right now. Might still be on strike the way everything's Hopefully. going. So unless they get a deal. I mean, yeah, I hope they get the deal. Yeah, but, but you know, so we'll see where we're at with that when it happens. Follow me, Sneaky Entertainment. Check out my sponsors. Without them, wouldn't be able to keep the lights on and pay Britney and, Tribe you know, put, put Chelsea on and put everybody else who sits in this chair. Like, you know, um, it... So this is like a job, the job that I pay to have. So think about that, and I'm trying to be the best I possibly can at it. And the, the more that y'all support those who support me, we keep this beautiful fantasy going as long until the wheels fucking fall off my point. All right, so thank you for tuning in. I'll be here next week. Uh, if you're just tuning in live, check out the podcast. Check me out in, on Instagram at S-H-N-E-A-K-Y-E-N-T. Or my personal one, official, S-H-N-E-A-K-Y. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. I love y'all, appreciate y'all, and thank you for tuning in. And we're going to play your song, Who Shot the King? Who Shot the King? Brittany, take us out. Black Power. Somebody gon' get it. Got it, got it. Good. They waking up in the hood. Somebody gon' get it, got it, good They wake it up, uh-uh, in the hood, uh-uh, 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 in the hood, uh-uh, 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 in the hood yeah. Young Wormman, what's happening? Yeah. Start talking that real, better watch for assassins Better watch who you yapping about in the field Tell me no dog, I won't heal, won't yield Bite that ass, it won't heal Rabies, baby, I win
what you see the media I spread love to everybody, even white girls Black tie events sniffing out the white girls Started with a dollar and a dream Ended up the head of a regime Uncle Sam plotting up a scheme Black tie events sniffing out the white girls Got my hoodie on, that's Assassin's Creed Blue blood, wanna see the blackest bleed Cotton gin green, got the brightest gleam Blood moon rising here, master screen The dream is real, like set device No politics, no enterprise Phone ringing, might be a tap on it I'm not violent, but they might put me back on it huh. I got a cop from women named Cross Might be getting sick of how the government law enforcement Pro-methazine, marijuana, dogs Phone ringing, might be a tap on it Pounds on my head, that's a million dollar money Shots fired, make it rain, season like money all white linen getting faded out the dark They gon' put me in the dirt, they gon' put me in the yard Somebody gon' get it, got it, got it, good They waking up in the hood, in the, up, in the Somebody gon' get it, got it, good They waking up in the hood, up in the hood, up in the Somebody gon' get it Up in the hood, up in the hood, up in the, uh.